What's going on, Comic Book Nation? Jim Viscardi here, and we are live at San Diego Comic Con 2019. And with me in studio on the couch is co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman. Glad to be here. This is awesome. Thanks. You we were chatting a little bit before, and you said this is your 34th one. 34th, yes. Yes, uh, the Turtles came out uh, uh, May 5th, 1984. 1985 was the first Comic Con here, and they were expecting uh, around 7,000 attendees that mm -hmm. year. That's insane. <laughs> this I, building wasn't even here then. <laughs> <laughs> you can only imagine, like, for, for, you know, for someone who, who has been on a ride, not only with, you know, your own creations, mm. but to see the the industry sort of grow and spawn, you know, uh, uh, around around it has got to be pretty mind-blowing. It, it really is. You know, not only my trajectory, just sort of what, you know, Peter and I did and, you know, the uh, incredibly amazing things we've been able to accomplish in our life, number one being fulfilling that childhood dream of drawing comic books for a living, mm -hmm. which was, you know, 1985 when we did issue two. From that point on, we could support ourselves drawing comic books and, and have done that ever since. But just to watch our industry grow into the um, just awesome powerhouse of pop culture, mm -hmm. Incredible, you know, you walk around this Comic-Con, it sums it all because it is the happiest place on earth for me and most of the people here because mm -hmm. everything we've ever dreamed about and enjoyed in our life is is right here happening right now. So when you're not doing uh, a ton of press, uh, you know, on, on any given day of the show, what is, what are the things that you like to do most, you know, coming to the con? Like, you know, is it is it the glad handing with fans? Is it ch you shopping or... All of the above, and it's like, and I love, um, you know, I love meeting the fans because I do. It's, it's, it, I feel like I have the best job in the entire universe because I have the best fans in the entire universe. I really do. It's like without them, mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, get up every day, you know, have my coffee and sit down and start drawing, and that's what I do pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. um, but if I wasn't meeting them and hanging out with them, I'd be in line waiting with them to see something else or <laughs> prowling the aisles looking for something um, weird, bizarre, cool, or something I've been hunting down to add to my toy shelf, like. Uh, <laughs> and so I really, you know, I do love the, there's something about a Comic-Con um, in general, and I've done, you know, goodness, over 30, 35 years, we've done a lot of them, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just the feel, the smell, the, the people, the camaraderie, just, it's, it is the happiest place on earth mm -hmm. for all of us. I love it. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to talk about the breakout smash hit, Jenica. Yes. How, how long were... Was she kind of in the works for you? Because she, she's, you know, the the character, you know, has been has been in the books for a bit, and then you know, obviously her uh, turn into a turtle um, is the the big thing that took everyone by surprise. Uh, but that moment in particular, like, where 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 did that come from, and you know, to to where we are now? It's it's great, uh, you know. All props, all direction, all thanks, all everything has to go to Tom Waltz, the mm -hmm. girl Tom Waltz, the head writer of the series. He's uh, not only. I am such a huge fan of Tom for his abilities and, and his writing and his storytelling. Um, but I also, you know, the guy's literally written 100 issues of Turtles in mm -hmm. these last eight or nine years. Um, and Tom's always had a, um, a wonderful vision. It's been an organic path, which is the beautiful part about how he writes and how uh, he and I and Bobby all work together. Bobby Kernow, the series editor, mm -hmm. is... Um, it's always story first and so right. it's like we pull things in that make sense when they make sense it's not like hey let's do something here that might bump sales or do this it's really we write those issues for ourselves and hopefully the fans will join us for the ride and so jenica came in as a character um to serve sort of a plot point we love the idea of strong women we love the idea of strong female characters in our series as well as in all comic series and mm -hmm. movies um so we introduced her to this character in issue 51 Every issue, we brought her back and we loved her more and more. And then around issue 60, between 60 and 65, we had this idea because we wanted a girl turtle. You know, mm -hmm. we go to comic conventions, you know, fans, we have these lovely young ladies that come up and, and you know, you've got, um, you know, Captain Marvel and you got these things. They go, when is there going to be a girl turtle? And Tom and I are like, we've been planning it for three years now. And so... Um, <laughs> Just as it worked out, storyline-wise, uh -huh. uh, issue 95 was the moment to bring that mm -hmm. to, cool. to be. And it was just like, yes. Mm -hmm. so, we're so, so happy. The response has been great. Yeah, yeah. no, it's been, it's been phenomenal. And so, <laughs> the, the interesting thing, too, is, uh, you know, the, the way, you know, she, be, she became a turtle mm -hmm. um, is, you know, is a way that, like, it's not... Because I saw online people like, well, are they just going to create a whole bunch more turtles now? Uh, <laughs> and it's like, well, uh, no. So, like, so how do you, now that she's a, a, 
you know, will be a, a part of the group. What do you see the 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 future um, kind of looking like? You know, for the group and how the dynamic now is all going to work for them. Well, it's it's been such a you know um, you know Jenica specific is what's been interesting because we built her character and had her become more part, you know uh, an important part of the family. Not mm -hmm. only sort of this you know this turn in sort of this um, uh, second for Splinter, then developing from that into almost this father daughter relationship, and mm -hmm. then her. Uh, just at the beginning of before she transitioned, um, you know, her start of her relationship with Casey, and so she's yep. become a solid family mm -hmm. member. And so, um, for us, I guess we've always thought of the Turtles group as a family and a family unit. So whenever mm -hmm. they do stuff and as they move forward together, despite differences of opinion and maybe a little bickering and things like that, they still move together as a family mm -hmm. family unit. So she'll be included. Like she has been, right. but now she's just in a slightly different form. <laughs> what uh, was there any discussion with you and Tom on uh, her color, the bandana, the bandana, bandana color? That was again, Tom. It's like I can't mm -hmm. say enough about you know the, the vision that he has for this stuff. I feel yeah. like now I say like you know for riding in a car, Tom's in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby's riding shock, and I'm in cheerleading in the back. You know, we all <laughs> sort of you know uh, come up with this directional stuff but it's really Tom's lead and mm -hmm. because of um, Jenica's original design and her blonde hair, mm -hmm. hair he wanted that okay. yellow bandana that All right. was really his, so his thought from the beginning so I was like yeah that works. Nice. There has been a overwhelmingly uh, awesome amount of Turtles merchandise. Yes. Um, I, I grew up with the Turtles I remember having you know all the figures and stuff as a kid. What is your your favorite thing that you did not expect mm -hmm. Turtles to show on? To show up, show up on. Oh man, that's a, uh, you know, that's, it's funny because it's um, there's been a lot of different stuff. Uh -huh. um, I got turtle socks on. I was giving <laughs> for the show, which is awesome. Uh, no, but um, I guess I always go back to the toys almost immediately because the, mm -hmm. to me that was like there was a big thing when I was a kid. I loved to like we all did playing with toys. Right. But you know, toys based on your own characters in this universe you created. I mean, um, you know, I go to uh, Android Krang body, some of the stuff mm -hmm. that came out of the cartoon show. Um, oh, it's, you know it's funny because I always think <laughs> fans always ask what's the what's the what's the grossest thing turtle thing ever made and uh, <laughs> and I always think of um, at one point they made these uh, you know those uh, hostess sort of half moon pie oh, thing uh -huh. they actually made <laughs> made one of these with uh, this green filling to be ooze and had green frosting and just the look of it was just scary. Um, but I have fans of, you know, and they ask me that at a panel or something, what's the grossest thing, mm -hmm. weirdest thing? And I bring that up That's and they right. go, oh, we love those. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, as a kid you do, you tend right. to. So. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you've had a, a bit of a wild ride with the, the turtles through um, various forms of other media, right? Like, you know, the, the cartoon in its various iterations has, has always been um, a, a huge hit and the, the, the movies have been great. Where, given where the entertainment industry is, you know, kind of headed, do you see the, the turtles ever, you know, ending up uh, potentially like live action television on a streaming service, things like that? Or do you think it's more, uh, you know, you keep the, the animation, the animated stuff is, is good for TV and you do the movies? Um, that, it's a great question because it's really it's been so fascinating as we watched you know so many things in our entertainment side of our industry change so much mm -hmm. um, you know in particular you know and I think of uh, and, and have enjoyed so much um, the Daredevil Marvel Daredevil TV series right. Charlie Cox and because Daredevil was a huge influence obviously on the Turtle universe mm -hmm. and me that was my favorite comic growing up and I feel like the Turtles have evolved to this point after 35 years almost and it sounds weird, but it's almost to where they started out, where we had the original black and white comic book mm -hmm. um, intended for an older audience, and then right. we developed the cartoon show specifically for a younger audience. And now mm -hmm. I feel we've gone back to that place where we have the original fans who were the younger. Yeah, they're now like now. <laughs> yeah. 30 they're years now old. Age, they're right, <laughs> exactly. And yeah. we're like, when can we get the darker turtle stuff? Exactly, so I feel like um, it, that's a direction I think we can go and, and uh, there'll be enough of an audience to support both because we do mm -hmm. see a lot of that fans asking, hey, when can we get that edgy, you know, Netflix Daredevil-ish sort of intensity of mm -hmm. the turtles at the same time you can balance that with such a wonderful uh, cartoon series like the Rise of the Turtles, a new right. series. Which exactly. Is, back to that spot where it's geared to mm -hmm. as a much younger audience. So I think we, that's hopefully in the future, I'd love to see that. Really. Which which turtle do you think is best suited for a daredevil hallway fight scene? Oh, <laughs> I would put him up against Raphael. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it'd be one of those things that, um, 
one of the things I loved what Cyril O'Neill did with the Nickelodeon series is that he made Michelangelo such a goofy character, but when he used his nunchucks, it was just, it was in, the intensity was awesome. So it'd be mm -hmm. like, that would be a surprising combination like Daredevil with Michelangelo. But no, I right. think head to head, I'd go Daredevil and Raphael. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. As you one more question uh, before you leave, is there uh, anything that you can you can say on a, a next movie front for Ooh. for Turtles, or is that just still that is just always a, a work in progress? Stay tuned. It stay tuned. It is a work in progress because you know the the ex uh, experiences and, and and sort of the fans' reactions uh, plus and minus to the mm -hmm. 2014 2016 movie. Um, uh, Paramount, I believe, is taking those. To heart and where they'd like to see the next iteration mm -hmm. go to so i think it's mm -hmm. going to be a, a next next level kind of awesome. stuff which i'm excited to see so nice um, they let me know every once in a while what's going on so. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for taking the time to stop by. i really my, appreciate it my pleasure for more uh comic-con 2019 keep it locked into comicbook.com guys